What's up guys? My name is Justin. Welcome back to the channel today. We are back on Assetto Corsa for my Assetto Corsa World Hot Lap Car Trial Champion thing. Someone's got to help me with a name for this. We're getting down to the nitty gritty and I still don't have a name for what the heck to call this. But Same deal as usual if you've seen one of these before. Um, but if you haven't, we're going to run around Laguna Seca and Monza in a car from Assetto Corsa and see what we can do for lap times. We're going to do one out lap as usual, one warm up lap, and then a flying lap that's going to go on the time chart. And we're going to compare with where uh, the rest of the cars are on the list that we've gone through so far. We're about 20, maybe a couple more than 20 cars in right now. So um, it's been enjoyable. Today's car is a very special one, both for me and I'm sure a lot of people that grew up on console racing, um, Xbox in particular, but uh, I'm sure it's been a lot of titles altogether. Uh, an absolutely world dominating car at the time. That came out and uh, a pretty special car for a lot of people, I'd say for sure. And of course, that car today at Laguna that we'll start out with is the Sauber C9. The Mercedes C9, Mercedes Sauber C9, however you know it. Uh, group 1 prototype. Group 1, is that what it was? Group 1? I don't remember what the group was. I thought it was Group 1, but now I'm second guessing myself, which maybe makes me think it's not correct. But, anyways. Uh, this car is absolutely a monster. <laughs> if you've raced this car on Forza, it is the most OP thing ever in a straight line, at least, which makes sense. It's an absolutely bonkers power plant in this thing. Uh, but we're, we're going to see what we can do with it here today. <laughs> Jochen Mass, of course, was the notable driver of this car. A couple, a couple other guys there that I'm not so familiar with. I did mention in the Praga video that came out last time. I'm just going to take a quick look and see what kind of options we have here. Uh, for tires, we got slicks there, hard, medium, soft. I'm uh, not going to mess with any of this stuff. We do have turbo settings, so we're going to crank that right up to 100 for maximum scariness, because why the hell not? Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to kind of try to go uh, a little bit bonkers, but nothing crazy. We're not going to change anything that's, you know, aero-related or suspension-related. Uh, we're just going to hop right out and go into it. So uh, same deal, just a couple laps around uh, Laguna here with the full craziness going on, and then we'll, uh, we'll get right into Monza, which this car is going to be up in the animal around there, I promise you that. So, give a quick listen to this car before we head out, and then we'll get right into it. Oh, yeah. Of course, this car did not have a sequential manual transmission back in the late 80s. Oh, it sounds great though, no downshift protection, so I'm going to try not to absolutely smoke the thing. Oh man, <laughs> that's how this is going to go. Absolute weapon of a car in a straight line, but still 80s road racing technology even for a top level prototype, so i got to rate myself back here after the grip monster that was the Praga. This car is the opposite. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, Justin. This might be one of those shut up and shut up and drive type of laps. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those shut up and drive type of laps, so I'm gonna shut up focus here for about the next three minutes, so I apologize this is gonna be really quiet, but uh I'm trying to get the best lap possible and I'll be back with you after I hopefully complete a flyer without flying off track. Gives you a good chance to just listen to this beast roar. Alright, let's try and get there would be good.
that was definitely a hand. Well, I had to try pretty hard to get that lap in. Let's see what the ultimate time is. 22 flat. Great lap time for the Sauber C9 around here. All uh, things considered, pretty tricky car to drive. Obviously, on Forza, I didn't get the full appreciation of how hard this car was to drive, but it makes sense. <laughs> Absolute weapon of a car in a straight line with, you know, 1980s handling technology. So that actually slots it into third place at 22 dead. Uh, faster than the Mazda 787B, even though that car was a couple years newer. Um... Ah, oh, good grief. That just takes the breath out of you trying to get the maximum out of this. Uh, 033. So that's the third best time there for the Sauber C9, right behind the Audi R18 e-tron. A couple seconds behind that. About 1.2 ahead of the 787B. Again, kind of makes sense. A uh, car from a similar time period, but this car obviously much more powerful and much more successful, frankly. Whew. So, 22 dead. That kind of gets me excited to run this next lap here at... Uh, at Monza, Whew. yeah, I don't, I don't know what to expect exactly from this Monza lap. I'm just kind of looking at what the 787B did. That was a 46.4. Uh, 46.8 was the McLaren P1. Expect this to be faster in both those if I can get the thing stopped and make the lap. Not sure if we'll quite get to the Audi R18 e-tron. That was a 139.4, obviously 20-something years, 25 years of technology more in that car. Uh, again, we'll stick on the racing slicks just to keep it fair. 100% turbo because we're going to need it around this puppy. Monza is all about that straight line speed. So, Same deal. I'll uh, do my outlap here and kind of talk you through it a little bit. And I'll probably shut up and try for the, uh, the warm-up in the flyer. This is going to be a lot of work around here as well, I promise you that. downshift protection. If I blow it up, I blow it up. It sounds great. Absolute monster of a car. We're going to see probably well in excess of 200 miles an hour around these straightaways here. Probably both the long ones if I had to guess. Yeah, I see we're already up to 180 around Kerber Grande. 90, 197 or something there. I looked before I had to look at my brake marker. We did miss the chicane just a little bit. So yeah, this thing is going to be a weapon down the straights. It's going to be all about how well we get through uh, the Lesmos and uh, Ascari. Definitely going to need second through there. Just a boat of a race car, honestly, compared to modern stuff. But incredibly fast and incredibly successful for its day. Let's see if we get here down to Ascari. stopped. <laughs> uh, big slide. <laughs> Alright, I am going to shut up and try to put a lap together here uh, to get a representative one for the flyer after this warm up here. So I'll be back in a very short amount of time, hopefully with some breath left. If I don't do that. Alright, here we go. Watch the speed hill climb, folks. It's going to be a great six there for game. This is a five-speed car. I realized we were going to run out of gear. Probably something I should have adjusted, but too late now. We're not on the chip too badly. Uh, and it's just really down the end of that main straight because I almost died. Alright. Let's ball up here.
have to get some bravery here for this one, folks. Hold your breath with me for about a minute and 40 seconds. Across the line, 141 dead. I think there's a little bit of time there, maybe half a second or so, uh, or maybe even a little bit more. Uh, with lengthening fifth gear, um, didn't realize we'd have an issue with that. Um, I, I mean, I guess I expected that it would be a little bit longer of a fifth gear, but still fine. We made it. Uh, I, I need to record that lap time, Justin. Don't forget that. Uh, yeah, so 41, that's going to be comfortably third on the board. Uh, again, comfortably faster than the 787B. Uh, five and a half seconds nearly faster and only about a second and a half off the RDR18. I don't think that there's a second and a half in either my driving or uh, a length and fit gear. Um, so it's probably still the third fastest car. Um, but, you know, who, who knows? If you want to go out and try it yourself, I highly encourage it. Super fun car to drive. Uh, weapon of a performer. Think about it. If it's nearly as fast uh, as a modern LMP1 car uh, around a high-speed track like Monza, uh, think about what it would have done back in the late 80s when you were having to race this thing <laughs> against uh, uh, like Jaguar XJ9s and some of the crazy cars of that period, the 787B that I've already mentioned. Uh, just unbelievable race cars. And <laughs> this thing shows up in a place like Le Mans even. It's just... <laughs> 230 or 240 miles an hour down the straights and you're like what in the hell and it wasn't like the uh the Peugeot from the day that just came to set the the speed trap record on the Mozan uh that car was just unbelievable but then broke immediately because it did 248 miles an hour or something whereas this car actually made it through the race and was successful uh around the world was successful for a couple of years so unbelievable that a car like this existed especially with 1980s technology See, there I lost a little bit in the last sector on my flying lap, um, and the first sector was pretty much bang on, so I do think that there's more time in it. Um, how much, I don't know exactly, but uh, super fun car to drive, of course, and uh, one of my favorite cars uh, back in the Forza 4 days, and continues to be to this day one of those kind of sort of halo cars for me, so... That's going to be it for today. If you haven't already, like and sub down below. Don't want you to miss any of the action from Assetto Corsa, iRacing. We're getting down to nitty-gritty. F122 getting Season 2 rolling here. Um, anything else I may post? We're getting into the winter time, so uh, we're going to hopefully have some Camaro snow videos, at least one. Uh, Ryan and I are going to try to go out when he gets back from Arizona to do, do a little bit of... Uh, snow Camaroing, so we'll see what that has in store for sure. But uh, as always, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Still love recording, having a great time doing it as always. So, till next time, bye bye.